Seeing Common Ring Plover and ticking it off the list is simple, but to watch them in detail and learn more about their lives, we need to get much closer, and that requires more patience and know-how. It's a lovely sunny day in September, and I've come to one of my favourite beaches on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent, South East England. You can forget Kiss Me Quick hats, ice creams, buckets and spades and fish and chips. I've come here because I can't think of a better place to show you common ring plover. But is common ring plover really common? Well, across much of its breeding range through northern Eurasia and Greenland, it is fairly abundant and usually known as simply ringed plover. Although it is also familiar as a post-breeding migrant in much of Europe, parts of Africa and Asia. Common ring plover is strongly associated with sandy and shingle beaches. Nesting above the high tide line in the breeding season and gathering in flocks at other times. Although their plumage is quite striking at close range, it also helps them to blend into their surroundings, making them hard to spot until they move. It's taken a lot of patience and a lot of waiting, but by sitting next to this wooden groin, I've blended in to the surroundings and the birds have come feeding really close to me now that tide's high. Common ring plover do not have the long probing bills of many shorebirds. Instead, they use their short bills to pick food items from the water's edge, from under seaweed and the surface of the beach. Ring plovers feed mainly alone, but they often form flocks at high tide, and this is a good time to see them interacting. The advantage of flocks is safety in numbers. If a predator arrives, it is hard for it to pick out an individual in the group. And there are more eyes to look out for predators. If just one bird sees danger, 